Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett uh, with the, uh, an oil uh, update. Obviously concerns in the Middle East uh, have sparked a, a very, very large rally in the price of oil. Uh, what we're endeavouring to do this morning is basically talk to people concerning uh, what's happened in Libya, um, how that could affect the price of crude and how we can trade it and where crude prices can actually go. So uh, basically in the next, uh, next uh, 8 to 10 minutes uh, we'll be showing you basically how to get involved in the market if you need to and also what we think is actually happening in Libya. It is an interesting thing, obviously with what's happening in Tunisia and Egypt, we're seeing this flow through uh, the region. Um, obviously uh, other areas like Oman, um, Dubai, all having protests. Uh, Libya is one which is obviously taken to the streets and we're seeing quite, uh, quite a lot of concern there in terms of social unrest. Um, I guess uh, when you look at it, uh, this has spread throughout the region and there are concerns. Uh, particularly with Egypt with the Suez Canal, but that seems to be placated. When we look at, obviously, the Straits of Hamas and Iraq, that's another area which seems to be placated as well at the moment. But they're probably the main key points uh, in terms of where we'll see a restriction of oil to the east, or particularly to those consuming nations. So uh, as it stands, um, you know, I certainly feel that what's happening in Libya is a concern. Libya uh, is, in fact, um, I guess the 11th largest uh, export of crude to the west. They produce about 1.79 million barrels. Um, and uh, when you look at it, it's roughly around a 1% type of uh, arrangement in terms of supply that uh, could be cut uh, from the market. But one thing we have to note is that um, we have that spare capacity already in the market, uh, particularly from OPEC. And OPEC can, in their, their rights, uh, if there is a concern that will threaten the price of crude, uh, will increase their capacity as a result of that. And that uh, should see the concerns from uh, Libya uh, abated. Uh, one thing also to note is that uh, they did have particular sanctions in 2003 um, that have lifted and that enabled the region to actually expand and obviously expand its exports. Um, so you're aware uh, oil accounts around about 95% uh, of total income for Libya. So it is a very important commodity uh, for the economy. And uh, I think if anything were to stop there, that whole economy would actually grind to a halt. The other thing to consider with uh, Libya is that 30% of the um, population is actually unemployed. Uh, so you can actually see how this uh, form of uh, unrest uh, could actually uh, continue to expand. Um, remember it is a socialist market economy as well, uh, so, sorry, a socialist economy, and, um, and as a result of that um, you can see that uh, it's certainly controlled by the government. Uh, so I guess with that you can see that uh, whole uh, area actually sort of uh, having a concern and that would restrict about, as I said, about 1.79 million of barrels of crude to the market. Now how has that affected the price? Uh, let's just have a look at a few charts. Um, I guess that's the monthly chart and uh, when we do look to uh, analyse uh, what's happening in the market we tend to look at the monthly first then go through to the daily and then go through to an hourly for entry points. But uh, as you can see here um, we've spent a lot of time up in these uh, low 90s and I think this could be some uh, particular reason or one particular action that could see the market actually continue to break through it. But as you can see, momentum indicators are still quite supportive. And when you look at that uh, monthly chart, you can start to get a sense that there is this possibility that crude prices can extend given the flare-ups that we are having in the Middle East and also the fact that this contagion could continue uh, to spread to other areas. Um, that's the daily chart. And this looks quite right here. Um, the stochastics are on the lower end of the range. Very strong move. Um, very hard to say because we, the states have been on holidays and we haven't seen a lot of movement, but we've seen lack of volatility in the market, which could cause that. Uh, but one thing we do know when we look at that is we have a market there uh, in terms of the old highs, 92.20, 92.50. And you can see as I'm running my ruler across there, 92.39, uh, 92.58. These areas of resistance um, are pretty major for the market. If they happen to go, then you could see crude trade on through that 100 area. In our analysis today, we've actually mentioned, given that we don't get any curve balls, that the market is well and truly supplied, demand equals supply at the moment. As a result of that, the price should remain relatively stable uh, between 92 uh, through to around about that $80, uh, $80 a barrel. But with that unrest, we have seen quite a large move from 84 through to 91.42. And I guess if we see follow through through 92.50, then there is a good chance the price will continue to rally, given that we don't get too many solutions with what's happening in the Middle East. The key concern we do have there is that contagion could spread. And once that contagion does spread, then it could spread to areas like Iraq, 
um, where we do have the Straits of Hamas, which is a, a, a key concern. Remember the Straits of Hamas, uh, we basically have close to about 45% um, of seaborne oil goes through those straits, it's only 54 kilometres, so as a result of that you could see quite a shortage. So the market is in fact building in that Middle Eastern premium as we speak, and they're building it in again. Okay, so on a technical footing, everything looks good. A break through that 92.50, and then oil will start to trade higher. Um, how would we actually trade oil? Um, and we look through the uh, trader, um, and I guess the, the most important thing there when you look for something to trade, how to trade, you actually just type it in, your instrument explorer, comes up with oil, and as you can see, all the related stocks you can trade. Um, you can also look through to the UREX in terms of um, the various uh, oil indices you can trade. Globex, you can see all the types of sweet crude you can trade. Um, looking through also, you've got ICE, which is the Brent contract, uh, which you can also trade as well. So um, when you look at it, um, on the futures exchange, there's quite a few uh, of the different crudes you can actually buy. I think one of the most important ones with the, the NYMEX light sweet crude, which is the West Texas. Moving across there, you've also got a small contract to a mini contract uh, with the crude. Now, just in looking at each one individually, um, if you look at the uh, NYMEX crude, um, it is uh, basically per $1 movement in crude, and uh, it represents uh, $1,000. So uh, when you look at that, you can uh, see that it is really a, quite a large contract. And I'm just going to bring it up here so you can have a look. And there we have, have it there at 91.52. Um, basically, it's the nominal value is 91,000. So um, each particular one contract in futures equals um, 1,000 barrels. So a $1 move equals 1,000. Um, so when you look at that, that's quite a large contract to actually trade. You can actually trade the lesser contract of the futures on the same exchange, and that's half its value. So if you traded a crude mini, uh, then it would only represent $1 represents um, 500 US dollars. Another thing to look at when you are trading um, crude, uh, you can actually trade crude uh, via a CFD. And uh, just looking up here, you can trade oil via a CFD. I think it's done as crude. Let's just grab that. Crude. And there you've got the uh, crude as, a, as a, the UK crude there, and also the US crude. One's taken off the Brent, and the other one's taken off uh, the West Texas. And uh, you can have a look there. As you can see, that's the April contract there. Uh, if I looked at the uh, contract here for April, they're both ones. You can see they're roughly the same. The advantage of trading the, C C the, um, the contract for di difference, the CFD, is that you can trade in any amount. To say if you did 10 there, you're only trading 10 barrels. So it's a, it's a very small a small position. You can trade whatever size you want. And as you can see, as I move up to close to 1,000, you can see that the nominal values there pretty much represent the same. So it's represented in barrels per contract. So quite a nice, easy way to, to actually get into the market without having a terrific, uh, terrific amount of leverage as you would have in the futures. Um, the other way to trade it is via warrants and options, and uh, warrants are very easy in terms of that because you are only risking what you actually put up, and you don't have any margin calls. That's similar for options as well. Um, but with the warrants, you can trade it in US dollars and or in Aussie dollars. But uh, I think most people will trade it in uh, US dollars. So I guess apart from the stocks, uh, which we naturally know the, the right equities to trade, you know, there are quite a few methods to actually trade crude. And as I've suggested, you can trade uh, the NYMEX contract, you can trade the Brent contract. Each one's a thousand barrels. You can trade the mini contract on, on, on West Texas on NYMEX, and that's only uh, 500 barrels or $500 a tick. You can trade the CFD. The CFD, you design how many barrels you actually want to trade, anywhere from 10 through to 1,000, because if you were trading 1,000, you'd obviously be trading the NYMEX contract. So there, and also you can trade on warrants. So I guess they're the made easy ways you can look to trade crude uh, on the trader. Um, you know, so I think that uh, each one, everybody has a certain amount of their own risk aversion, and as a result of that, they'll choose each individual instrument. But one of the most important things, I think, is looking at what's happening in the fundamental market and trying to tee that, into the, um, trying to tee that up uh, into the technical market. And as we can see, the technical analysis here suggests that if we take out 92.50, the chances are we will go higher. 
Well, I guess that's about it from me on this. Um, obviously, with what's happening in Libya, it is a concern. Um, at the moment, we find that prices will remain probably better bid. As a result of that, we'll probably see prices test that 92.50, and if they do break that, then we'll have a spit to the top side. As to whether or not it will stay up those, to those levels will really depend on what happens in the region because, as we've mentioned, the world has been awash with oil uh, for some time and uh, it's in a very stable price. So I guess, if anything, this could be a temporary move to the top side, but as it stands, you can't stand in front of the market, so you've got to flow with it. As a result, if things escalate, the price will probably escalate as well. So that's about it for me. Um, I hope everyone has uh, some fun. Um, as I said, this is an introduction uh, to how you can trade taking the oil market, taking, um, taking what's happening in Libya as a means that you can either look to hedge and or trade, and I've also outlined the various products as well which you can actually use. So good luck, and uh, remember you can't stand in front of the market, just move with the market, um, and hopefully your positions will move with it. Have a good day. Bye for now.